Uh, meeting come to order, please. Uh, Mike, would you call the roll? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Crohan. Present. Commissioner Gibbons. Here. Commissioner Lane. Present. Commissioner McCord. Present. Commissioner McCoy. Present. Commissioner Rose. Present. And Chairman Lackey. Present. So we do have a quorum, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mike, would you uh, read the motion to hold a meeting electronically due to COVID-19, please? Yes, yeah, so we will need a motion um, to hold the meeting electronically. And the motion should say something on the lines of uh, due to the um, COVID-19 crisis, um, there is the necessity to hold the meeting electronically. Someone would like to make a motion to that effect? I'll move to that effect. Steve second. Lane, second. Motion made in second. Uh, Announcement, staff. Uh, Chairman, we, we probably need to vote on that motion to- Oh, I'm sorry. We do. I'll, I'll do that via roll call vote. That'll be fine. Go ahead. So when I when I call your name, please uh, say yes or no. Uh, Don uh, Don Crohan. Yes. Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Lane. Yes. Mr. McCord. Yes. Mr. McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Commissioner Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next, to item three, announcements. Uh, Joe? Yes, this is Joe Horn. I just have a couple of quick announcements. Uh, announcement one is that the you received a, a new copy of the consent agenda this afternoon, or you should have electronically. Uh, nothing major in there, different, except it needed to be renumbered, and it should reflect that. Secondly, we do have a request for a non-agenda item. Stone Valley, it's simply a large lot easement plat that did not get recorded in time. And the applicant asked that it be, asked that it be reapproved so he can record it um, shortly. Uh, that, of course, will, will require um, a unanimous consent from this body in order to do so. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yes, uh, sadly, I must make this announcement. Um, Mike's mother passed away last week, and I know each of you, each of you would uh, join uh, join us in wishing us our sincerest condolences on her passing. Other than that, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, nothing else. Thank you. Uh, we need a, do we need a motion to put Stone Valley on? Yes, sir. Let's uh, consider that right now. Let's add that as the last agenda item. If there are no uh, objections, anyone out there in the electronic I'm plan I'm object? Add Stone Valley to the agenda, last item. Holly Gibbons, second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, Mike? Okay, Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McCord? Yes. Commissioner McCoy? Yes. Commissioner Rose? Yes. And Chairman Lackey? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, consideration of the minutes of April 2020. Any uh, corrections or changes by anyone? I hear none. Motion to approve. So move. Slamming. The second. Steve Lane, second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Mike? Yes, sir. Commissioner Crohan? Yes. Commissioner Gibbons? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McCord? Yes. Commissioner McCoy? Yes. Commissioner Rose? Yes. And Chairman Lackey? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Commissioner Lobbers? Yes. Yeah. 
Hello, Beth. Commissioner Lawther, yes. Thank you, Beth. Consideration of the consent agenda. Anyone wishing to pull an item for separate discussion, please say so now or we'll take it as a whole. Anyone? Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll begin with item three, Barrington Retreat, Section 5, Performance Bond for Wastewater Collection System, $125,300. Recommendation extended current amount for a period of six months. Item four, Clovercroft Preserve, Section One, Maintenance Bond for Wastewater Collection System, $45,000. Recommendation release the bond. Item five, Clovercroft Preserve, Section Two, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage, and Erosion Control, $771,000. Recommendation reduced to maintenance in the amount of $319,000 for a period of one year. Item six, Curry Ingram Academy, performance bond for wastewater treatment and disposal system, $90,000. Recommendation, extended current amount for a period of eight months. Item seven, Enclave at Dove, Dove Lake Wastewater Area, performance bond for landscaping, $34,155. Recommendation, reduced to maintenance amount of $10,250 for a period of six months. Item eight, Enclave at Dove Lake Wastewater Area Performance Bond for Wastewater Treatment Disposal System, $271,500. Recommendation, defer until the July meeting. Item nine, Fox and Canyon, Section One, Performance Bond for Landscaping, $36,300. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of one year. Item 10, Fox and Canyon, Section One, Performance Bond for Water, located for water, $73,552.25. Recommendation is released on April 30th, 2020. Item 11, Hardeman Springs Wastewater System, performance bond for landscaping, $63,850. Recommendation, extended current amount for a period of six months. Item 12, Hardeman Springs Section 1, performance bond for landscaping, $84,150. Recommendation, reduced the maintenance amount of $25,245 for a period of six months. Item 13, Hardeman Springs, Section 1, Performance Bond for Wastewater Collection System, $104,000. Recommendation, extended current amount for a period of one year. Item 14, Hardeman Springs, Section 1, Performance Bond for Water, $250,000. Recommendation, reduced the maintenance amount of to $37,500 for a period of one year. Item 15, Hardeman Springs, Section 1, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage, and Road Control, $550,000. Recommendation, extended current amount for a period of one year. Item 16, Stevens Valley, Section 1, Maintenance Bond for Roads, Drainage, and Road Control, $665,000. Recommendation, extended current amount for a period of one year. Thank you, sir. Any questions on consent? Is there a motion? On Crowhead, I make a motion that we accept staff's recommendation. Second. Is there a second? Um, Holly Given, second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Uh, prepare to vote, Mike. Commissioner Crowhead. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lathers. Yes. Commissioner McCord? Yes. Commissioner McCoy? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Rose? Yes. And Chairman Lackey? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, under old business, uh, I did item 17, preliminary plant review for King's Chapel, phase nine, containing zero lots on 123.682 acres, located off Murfreesboro Road in the fifth voting district staff aaron holmes thank you mr chairman a revised concept plan for this development was approved at the september 2008 meeting the applicant is now requesting preliminary plat approval for the ninth phase of the development which consists of no buildable lots approximately 119 acres of open space and the right-of-way for majestic meadows drive at the time of this writing staff's comments have not adequately been addressed 
Accordingly, staff recommends deferral until the June 2020 meeting in order to allow additional time to address staff's comments. Your motion. On Crowhan, we accept staff's recommendation. Sammy McCoy, second. Both made and seconded. It's fair to vote, Mike. Commissioner Crowhan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Doing item 18. Preliminary plat review for King's Chapel phase 10 containing seven lots on 28.14 acres located off Murfreesboro Road in the 5th voting district. Staff? Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised site plan for this development was approved at the September 2008 meeting. The applicant is now requesting preliminary plat approval for the 10th phase of the development, which consists of seven lots and approximately 23 acres of open space. It should be noted that prior to submittal of any additional final plat for this development, all roadway improvements on State Route 96 shall be constructed as stipulated in the traffic study review findings provided by the county's traffic engineering consultant. Improvements include the second entrance onto State Route 96, two exit lanes, and both right and left turn lanes from State Route 96. The applicant has requested a right-of-way width of 40 feet for all roads within the development. Staff supports these requests. Plat is in order and staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat as well as the requested right-of-way width. Following must be addressed in conjunction with final plat consideration. Number one, whoops. Number one, prior to the submittal of any additional final plat for this development, off-site roadway improvements as stipulated in the traffic study review findings provided by the county's traffic engineering consultant, including the second entrance to, <clears throat> to the development and associated turn lanes must be completed to the satisfaction of TDOT. Number two, payment of Payment of traffic mitigation funds as outlined in the September 2008 letter from the County Traffic Engineering Consultant. Number three, establishment of performance funds for roads, drainage, and erosion control. Number four, establishment of a performance bond for water improvements in favor of Millcroft and Utility District. Number five, establishment of a performance bond for the wastewater collection system. Number six, execution of a stormwater maintenance agreement and submission of an operation and maintenance plan for stormwater improvements. And number seven, providing two copies of the final plat in DWG format based on recordable media based on the Tennessee State Plan Coordinate System prior to signature and recording of the plat. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions of staff? Uh, Anyone? This is, this is Rhonda Rose. I have a, a question. Um, as this refers to the traffic study that was done and it's wanting to have things that uh, coordinate with that, I see the traffic study was done back in 2008. Has anything been done since then to update that, to make this more relevant? Mike, do you want to answer that? Mike or Floyd? Commissioner Rose, um, no, it, it ha well, <clears throat> there was, a, was, it, was it 2008, Aaron, when the revised concept plan was done? Yes, sir, it was. Okay, so Commissioner Rose, it, it has not been updated since then, but when you do a traffic study like this, um, you're looking at future conditions as well as existing conditions, and you're building in uh, growth in background traffic. So, um, I, you know, I think we can assume that that it was that it took into account the the growth in traffic on that road. Okay, it's 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 just that it's been 12 years, and that seems like a long time to me. So, um, but thank you for explaining that. My pleasure. Other discussion? Anyone? Don Crowhan. I move yes, we accept staff's recommendation. I am here second. Thank you. Motion been made and seconded. Uh, prepare to vote, Mike. Mr. Crowhan. Yes. 
Commissioner Gibbons. Commissioner Gibbons. She might be on mute. I'll come back to her. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. Chairman Lackey. Yes. And Holly. Still not there? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all? Yes, sir. Oh, motion carries then. Thank you, sir. Uh, agenda um, 19, uh, public hearing, a revised concept plan review for the Grove containing 820 lots on 1228.6 acres located off of Wildings Boulevard in the second voting district. Mike, if you would, for the uh, record, uh, explain the public hearing procedure or the public hearing procedure and the lack of response, please. Yes, sir. So this is a public hearing item. And so we advertised the public hearing, sent notices and uh, did the customary uh, public notice. Uh, there were no people that requested to speak. The way we had that set up is that uh, had someone wanted to speak, they would have let us know and we would have invited them to the meeting and they would have had just the same opportunity to speak as if it was a physical meeting. Uh, but again, nobody signed up for the public hearing. Thank you, sir. In view of that, we will not hold a public hearing on agenda item 19. Agenda item 20, non-residential site plan review for Stevens Valley Community Center. On uh, there, there's yes, still, there, so there doesn't need to be a public hearing because no one signed up, but there still does need to be the open and closed. Oh, well, I don't think that the public hearing needs to be opened and closed, but the planning commission needs to take action on item 19 before going on to item 20. And that action would be? Uh, I have well, a report, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, Aaron will read the staff report. Oh, okay. This is Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised concept plan for this development was approved at the April 2016 meeting. The applicant is now requesting approval of another concept plan in order to add approximately eight acres to the overall site. Okay portion of this acreage will be incorporated into nine lots within phase 10, which appears as item 23 on this agenda. The remaining acreage will be incorporated into open space. No additional lots are proposed. Staff recommends approval of the revised concept plan with the same stipulations established in conjunction with the April 2013 approval. Question for staff. I accept the after recommendation. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Lothers. Can I just ask for a clarification, please? You bet. Um, since the development was approved at the April 2016, it was just reported April 2013, but is it true it was August 2013 for approval? Is that correct? Yes, Commissioner. What on the April 2016 meeting, the approval referred back to the April 20, or excuse me, the August 2013 meeting Okay. And then that one, that meeting referred back to the original approval. So the the August 2013 meeting is correct. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, ma'am. Do we have a second? A blather second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Prepare to vote, Mike. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And item 20, non-residential site plan. Non-residential site plan review for Stevens Valley. Community Center on 11.58 acres located off of Glen Rock Drive in the 9th Voting District. Staff? Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting approval for the Stevens Valley Community Amenity Center. 
pursuant to section 11.03 D8 of the zoning ordinance, this site plan must be reviewed by the planning commission at a public meeting. The, app the applicant has requested action on this item be deferred until the June 2020 meeting. Staff concurs with this request. Uh, this is question to staff. Is it fair yeah. enough to ask uh, why um, they're asking for it to be deferred? Yes, ma'am. During the review process, the site plan was changed. And so at that point, we requested the applicant to request a referral so that we as the staff could review it to ensure compliance. Thank you. Very good. Don Crowley, a question? Does that mean that we will see the site plan at the next meeting? Yes, Commissioner Crohan, that's correct. It will come before you in June under old business. Okay, thank you. In that case, I approve staff's recommendation. Is that a motion? Amy McCoy, second. Motion made and seconded, darling. Oh, oops, I started to say it again. Mike, I'll roll. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Good item 21, non-residential site plan review for Troubadour Golf and Field Club. Section four amenity area on 2.17 acres locate off of Lance Leaf Drive in the fifth voting district. Staff? Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting approval for a secondary amenity center within the development. Pursuant to section 11.03 D8 of the zoning ordinance, this site plan must be reviewed by the planning commission at a public meeting. The facility, which is located in open space, will consist of a 689 square foot pool house, swimming pool, pavilion, and gazebo for the exclusive use of the residents of the development. Ordinance standards have been met, as have the requirements of section 11.03 D8. Landscaping plan has been submitted and approved by staff. Site plan is in order and staff recommends approval with the following conditions. Number one, posting of a performance bond for landscaping improvements in the amount of $108,200. Number two, posting of a performance bond for the wastewater collection system in the amount of $2,300 as specified by the county's wastewater consultant. Thank you, sir. Questions of staff? Anyone? Motion? Commissioner Lothers, sorry. Yes, Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I just make a motion to accept um, staff's recommendation, approval with the stated conditions in our, our notes. Thank second. you, sir. Oh, Don Crowhan, second. Thank you, sir. We have a motion and a second to uh, Mike Collaro. Mr. Crowhan. Yes. Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Lane. Yes. Mr. Lothers. Others, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Mr. McCoy. Yes. Mr. Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Good night of 22 non residential site plan review for Fiddler's Glen Cox, La Cox Lad non traditional wastewater treatment facility. On 160.87 acres located off of Murfreesboro Road in the fifth voting district. Staff? Aaron Holmes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the March 2017 meeting, a site plan for the Cox Lad non traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system was approved to serve the proposed Arrington Ridge development, which consists of 88 lots. The concept plan for Arrington Ridge was approved in May 2017. At the April 2018 meeting, a revised site plan for the Cox Lad non traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system was approved to add capacity to serve the proposed Pine Creek development. The concept for Pine Creek, which consists of 99 lots, was approved in September 2008. The applicant is now requesting approval of a revised site plan in order to enlarge the system by adding additional wastewater disposal areas 
and increasing storage capacity. The expansion will enable the system to serve the proposed 130 lot Fiddler's Glen subdivision in addition to the previously approved Arrington Ridge and Pine Creek subdivisions. A concept plan for the new subdivision will be submitted in the coming months. The county zoning ordinance requires a site plan for a proposed non-traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system, or in this case, an expansion of the ex an existing system to be approved before a concept plan for the use, use it will serve may be approved. The subject properties total approximately 419 acres and are located on Murfreesboro Road, Fox Road near Interstate 840. Portions of the site are covered by natural resources, including hilltops, areas of moderate and steep slopes, floodplains, streams, wetlands, and woodland, woodlands. Millcrofton Utility District provides water service to the, to the approved developments and, along with Nolensville College Grove Utility District, will provide water service to the proposed subdivision. A revised design development report and detailed soils investigation report were prepared by the applicant and submitted to the county. The county's wastewater consultant has reviewed these reports and is recommending approval of the proposed site plan. A draft modified state operating permit adding the capacity has been issued by TDEC. A conceptual layout for the proposed subdivision, which depicts a total of 130 lots, has been included as sheet C4.0 of the site plan packet. The conceptual layout of the new subdivision is provided for illustrative purposes only and has not yet been reviewed for compliance with applicable regulations. Site plan is in order and staff recommends approval <clears throat> prior to final plat submittal for the first section of the proposed subdivision, a zoning certificate for the completed treatment and disposal system. <clears throat> prior to the issuance of the zoning certificate, the applicant shall provide the following. A letter from TDEC indicating that the non-traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system was installed and is functioning. Number two, as built drawing showing the location of all system components and a sealed certification letter from the design engineer indicating that said system was constructed in accordance with the approved construction plans and specifications. Number three, a letter from the owner slash utility provider indicating that it has accepted said system and is currently operating the same. Number four, the posting of a performance bond in the amount of $102,300 for the addition to said system as it relates to the Fiddler's Glen development as specified by the county's wastewater consultant. Number five, the posting of a performance bond in the amount of $27,400 for landscaping improvements for the addition to the wastewater system as it relates to the Fiddler's Glen development. And number six, execution of performance agreements for the above reference sureties. Thank you, sir. Questions of staff? Comments? Excuse me, Mr. Motion. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just for the record, thank you, Aaron, for reading that. On um, paragraph two, the concept plan for Pine Creek, which consists of 99 lots, was approved in September of 2018. I think just an, by accident it was said 2008. And just want to make sure in the record it reflects 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lothers. You are correct. It is 2018. Any other questions? Discussion? I, I make a motion we approve this with the correction of the date. Holly Given, second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Uh, Mike, vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Crohan. Yes. Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Lane. Yes. Mr. Lothers. Mr. Lothers. Lothers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McCord. Yes. Mr. McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rhodes? Yes. And Chairman Lucky? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, under preliminary plats, agenda item 23, preliminary plat review for the Grove phase 10, containing 55 lots on 90, excuse me, 49.64 acres located off of Wildings Boulevard in the second voting district. Staff. Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised concept plan for this development appeared as item 19 on this agenda. 
a preliminary plan for this phase of the development was approved at the January 2020 meeting and the applicant is now requesting approval of a revised site plan in order to increase the size of nine lots and add additional open space. The revised preliminary plat is consistent in layout with that depicted on the revised concept plan. And so long as item 19 on this, of this agenda was approved, staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat with the following conditions, which shall be addressed in conjunction with final plat consideration. Number one, establishment of a performance bond for roads, drainage, and erosion control. Number two, establishment of a performance bond for water improvements in favor of Millcroft and Utility District. Number three, establishment of a performance bond for the wastewater collection system as applicable. Number four, submission of landscaping plans and establishment of a performance bond for landscaping. Number five, execution of a stormwater maintenance agreement and submission of an operation and maintenance plan for stormwater improvements. And number six, submission of the approved final plat in DWG format on recordable media based on the Tennessee State Plan Coordinate System prior to signature and recording of the plat. Thank you, sir. Questions of staff? Comments? Don Crawhan, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve this with staff's recommendation. Holly Gibbons, second. Thank you, Holly. Mike, prepare to vote. Okay. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Lane. Yes. Mr. Lothers. Mr. Lathers, I'll come back. Uh, Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. Chairman Lackey. Yes. And back to Commissioner Lathers. Yes. Thank you. The motion, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 20. 24 preliminary plat review for Terra Vista subdivision phase one containing 98 lots on 130 acres located off a long lane in the 12th voting district. Yeah. Aaron Holmes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised concept plan for this development, which had been revised in accordance with the remand and court order, was approved by this body at the February 2020 meeting, and the applicant is now requesting preliminary plat approval of the development, which contains 98 lots approximately 87 acres of open space and the wastewater treatment and disposal system. As depicted on the approved concept plan, the applicant is requesting a design speed of 25 miles per hour and a right-of-way width of 40 feet. The plan is consistent in the layout with the approved concept plan and the well located on site has been capped and abandoned in accordance with applicable regulations. Staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat as well as the requ request related to design speed and right of way width. In conjunction with final plat consideration, the following items must be addressed. Number one, prior to final plat submittal for the first section of the development, offsite roadway improvements must be completed to the satisfaction of the county highway superintendent. Number two, Prior to final plat submittal for the first section of the proposed subdivision, a zoning certificate must be obtained for the completed treatment and disposal system. Prior to issuance of the zoning certificate, the applicant shall provide the following. A, a letter from TDEC indicating that said system to serve this development was installed and is functioning. B, as built drawings showing the location of all system components, as well as the monitoring wells as shown on the monitor monitoring plan, and a seal certification letter from the design engineer indicating that said system and monitoring wells as shown on the monitoring plan and a sealed certification letter from the design engineer that said system and monitoring components were constructed in accordance with the approved construction plans and specifications. <laughs> a letter from the owner slash utility provider indicating that it has accepted said system to serve this development and is currently operating same. D posting of a performance bond in the amount of $120,000 for said system as specified by the county's wastewater consultant. E, execution of a performance agreement for the above reference surety. F, proof of submittal of a monitoring plan prepared by a professional engineer or certified hydrologist showing the location of monitoring wells and surface water sampling locations to assess the impact of the wastewater disposal system 
on the ground and surface water in the area surrounding the disposal fields to TDEC and the county's wastewater consultant. And G, proof that any required class five injection well permits have been issued by TDEC. Number three, data from the monitoring wells and surface water sampling locations must be submitted to TDEC along with monthly operating reports. Number four, proof that any required class five injection well permits have been issued by TDEC. Number five, the HOA documents must be submitted with the final plat and the approved HOA documents must be recorded concurrently with the recording of the final plat. Number six, establishment of a performance bond for roads, drainage, and erosion control. Number seven, establishment of a performance bond for water improvements in favor of Millcroft and Utility District. Number eight, establishment of a performance bond for the wastewater collection system. Number nine, execution of performance agreements for the above reference sureties. Number 10, Commission of Landscaping Plans and Establishment of a Performance Bond for Landscaping. Number 11, Execution of a Stormwater Maintenance Agreement and Submission of an Operation and Maintenance Plan for Stormwater Improvements. And number 12, Submission of the Approved Final Plat in DWG format on recordable media based on the Tennessee State Plan Coordinate System prior to signature and recording of the plat. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, any questions of staff, comments? Don Crowhan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question is on the well that's been capped. Is it in capped in such a way that it cannot be used in the future? Commissioner Crohan, Tim Turner, the design engineer, I do believe is with us, and I will defer it to him to answer the question. Uh, yeah, this is Tim Turner, T Square Engineering. Yes, those wells have been capped and will be permanently capped. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Other questions? Comments? This is Commissioner Rose. Um, so I'm assuming from all this that the questions that were raised by um, residents in the area about their wells being downhill from uh, this subdivision, those questions have all been resolved. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Christy Ransom. They've been resolved in accordance with our regulations, Commissioner Rose. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Christy. Other questions or comments? This is Commissioner Lothers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Has there been any modification to the roadway improvements since the last public hearing? I know their people had communicated concerns. They would rather have a left turn lane than a, a right turn lane in. It's nothing that can be required. I just wanted to verify that there would have been no alterations as a result of public hearing. Is that correct? That is correct, Commissioner Law. There's, there's no, there's a, the left-hand turn line from the west, a right-hand turn line from the west, I'm sorry, coming from 65. But there's but no, no uh, left turn. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Motion? Don Crohan, I move we accept staff's recommendation. Rhonda Rose, I second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, prepare to vote, Mike. Mr. Crohan. Yes. Mr. Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, abstain. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. On the final plat, final plat review revised for June's Grove Farm Lodge Lot Easement containing three lots on 34.8 acres located off Arno College Grove Road on June's Grove Private Lane in the second voting district. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Lincoln Sweet. Uh, the subject property is approximately 35 acres in size and is located on Junes Grove Lane off Arno College Grove Road, approximately one third mile east of Hyde Road. The applicant is requesting approval of a large lot easement subdivision in order to revise one lot and create the fourth and fifth lot off an existing 50 foot ingress egress utilities easement. At this time, the applicant is requesting deferral to the June 2020 meeting to allow more time to demonstrate county regulations have been met. Staff concurs with this request. Questions? Don Crohan, 
SNAP staff for recommendation for a deferral. I mean, there's a, second. Is that a second, Sammy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Call the roll, Mr. Yes, Martin. Sir. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes, motion carries. Thank you. And item 26, final plant review for the green pastures large lot easement containing four lots on 69.93 acres located off of Green Chapel Road in the first voting district. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Legion Sweet again. Uh, the subject property is approximately 63 acres in size and is located off Green Chapel Road, approximately one mile south of Pinewood Road. The applicant is requesting approval of a large lot easement subdivision in order to create four lots of a new 50 foot ingress egress utility easement. The site contains natural resources requiring protection, including steep slopes and woodlands. There are moderately steep slopes inside and outside of building envelopes and very steep slopes outside of building envelopes. The site is also almost entirely under tree canopy. All zoning ordinance requirements, including those regarding the protection of natural resources, have been met. The applicant is uh, proposing individual septic systems for the lots, and the Williamson County Department of Sewage Disposal Management has approved the request. Water will be provided by individual wells on the lots. As no fire hydrants are proposed and as none are currently located within 500 feet of the building envelopes, the building envelopes have been separated by 200 feet. Slide is in order and staff recommends approval subject to the following. A notice of coverage issued by TDEC will be required prior to the signing of the plat. Number two, a land disturbance permit must be obtained for the overall development. And number three, driveway and drainage infrastructure must be complete consistent with zoning ordinance requirements prior to issuance of building permits. Questions of staff? Or comments? Don Crowhan, I move we accept staff's recommendation. Holly Gibbons, second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Prepare to vote, Mike. Mike, you know, you there for a second. What's up, uh, Mike? Let's try this again. Commissioner <laughs> Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. And Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. In item 27, final plant review for Owen Hill Farm, large lot easement containing five lots on 25.03 acres located off Owen Hill Road in the second voting district. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Lincoln Sweet again. Uh, the original final plot for this development was approved at the September 2007 meeting, and the applicant is now requesting approval of revised final plot in order to remove the pedestrian easement from the perimeter of the development. Since the final plot was previously approved for this development and the revision affects all of the lots, the signatures of all lot owners shall be affixed to the plat prior to signature and recording of the revised final plat. The plat is in order and staff recommends approval. Thank you, sir. Any questions of staff? Comments? Don Crowhan, have we all the signatures been obtained? Not as of yet, but they will need, be needed before the plaque can be recorded. How many are we lacking, do you know? I'm not sure. There aren't a whole lot of uh, owners on the, in the, for the, of the lots. There are maybe two or three owners. Okay, thank you. I, I move we touch the a recommendation, Mr. Chairman. There's a second. Lothers second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Roll call. Mike. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. 
Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. Chairman Lackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, under other business, uh, agenda item 28, establishment of a performance bond for landscape improvements for South Hall Hamlet, <clears throat> excuse me, on 19.56 acres located off Carter's Creek Pike in the 9th voting district. Staff? Aaron Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Board of Zoning Appeals approved a request for a special use permit to allow a mixed use multi tenant development on the subject property at the April 2020 meeting and the site plan for this use has reviewed by has been reviewed by staff. However, due to the cost of the required improvements and pursuant to section 16.07 of the zoning ordinance, a performance bond for landscaping improvements must be established by the planning commission prior to final site plan approval being granted by staff. Staff recommends the establishment of a performance bond for landscaping improvements in the amount of $84,205. Thank you, sir. Motion. Move with Don Crohan. Move with Seth Dash. Recommendation. Amy McCoy, second. Thank you. Roll call, Mike. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. Chairman Lack. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item last, uh, in addition to the agenda on Stone Valley staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Lincoln Sweet again. Uh, this is a request by the applicant to reapprove the final plat since it was not recorded before it expired. This is for Stone Valley. Uh, first, in order for the Planning Commission to consider re the request as an, okay, actually going back to the body, uh, revised final plat for this development was approved at the February 2020 meeting in order to revise property lines and reduce the number of lots from five to four. The applicant is now requesting reapproval of the final plat since it wasn't recorded before this body's approval expired. The plat is in order and staff recommends approval subject to the following. Before posting a performance bond in the amount of $79,000 for water improvements as specified by HB and TS Utility District. And number two, driveway and drainage infrastructure must be complete prior to issuance of building permits. Questions of staff? Motion. Move to accept staff's recommendation. Amy McCoy, second. Was made and seconded. Any further discussion? Prepare to vote. Mike. Commissioner Crohan. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner McCord. Yes. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. yes. Commissioner Rose. Yes. Commissioner uh, Chairman Lack. Yes. Motion carries. Fine job, folks. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. We're out of here. Second. Thank you.